Welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Amya Kumar Das, associated with the Department of Sociology, Tejpur University. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss on the transmodernity as put forward by Enric Dussel under the paper Contemporary Social Theory. We have been discussing various issues on Western modernity, the production of knowledge, and its critic. In a similar way, today, here in the session, we are going to discuss on Dossil's idea and his critic about the Western modernity, the concept he has developed under the concept of transmodernity. Basically, Enric Dussel is a Latin American philosopher who works in the context of modernity and he offers criticism to it. Along with Walter Mignolo and Anibal Cuisano, they have criticized the whole process of modernization and modernity in the Latin American context. They vehemently argue that what are the conditions that have created this situation. They say that knowledge cannot be produced in isolation from this geopolitical situation. All knowledge productions, they are attached to the social processes, situation, politics, geographical region, so on and so forth. To evaluate and assess any form of knowledge systems we need to look at in its context, historicity, so on and so forth. So, here today we are going to discuss how they have put forward this concept, how they are arguing, criticizing about the modernity, process of modernization through the concept called transmodernity. Dussel situates European history, European modernity in the trajectory of world history. He emphasizes there are various forms of modernity prior to the European form. He suggests that the modernity appears within the Europe and it claims itself as center and other places it claims as periphery. When we look at this position of modernity where Europe tries to establish its supremacy over other, it has special condition, thereby creating other forms of inferiority in terms of knowledge, in terms of power, in terms of civilizational aspect, culture, so on and so forth. So, in this case, he stresses back to the history and origin of this whole idea of modernity. First, it, he says it happened in uh, two uh, ways. One is that according to Dussel, Western theorization introduced two concepts of modernity. The first conception is that of modernity, it takes its starting point or rather as its frame of reference from the various parts of the European continent and accordingly created a provincial and regional perspective which is present in the work from Weber to Habermas. He also says that the second conception of the global understanding of modernity, which he argues that Europe is the center of world history and that is in an essential trait of the modern world. Consequently, Spain is seen to have become the first modern nation followed by Portugal. And it is at a later stage that England and France replaced Spain and Portugal as the hegemonic power. Enric Dussel goes on to posit a theory of transmodernity in the context of which he calls for incorporating cultural movements which have been excluded in the European version of modernity. He urges a history of modernity from without in order to transcend a modernity of the Western European type. Transmodernity as a conceptual tool enabled the scholars in Latin America to construct a sociology which questioned the episteme of Western sociology. 
Anival Quizano and Walter D. Mignolo are the two prominent scholars along with Dussel who attempted to historically situate the episteme of sociology. They introduced conceptual innovations in terms of new ways of thinking such as the coloniality of power and border thinking. These categories were used to explicate the Latin American experience of colonialism as well as to recover the dynamics of social change in this region wherein colonial history intersects with regional history to produce a whole series of cultural and sociological effects. According to Dussel, the first critic of the European project of modernity can be seen in the work of a soldier turned Catholic priest Bartholm de las Casas. Reflecting on the situation in Latin America, he refused the Spanish way of colonization and modernization that was going on in Latin America and questioned the grounds of just war for the sake of modernity. In fact, Dussel argues that this Las Casas raises the fundamental questions of modernity. What right does Europe have to colonially dominate the Indies? So, if we look at this fundamental question raised by the soldier turned Catholic priest, then long back it reminds us the powerful critic he offered against this European modernity. We have been discussing the different aspects and phases of modernity where it turns violent for the sake of freedom, liberty, democracy, so on and so forth. But critic raises questions that how and why it is so important for the West to dominate the indigenous population and then to establish civilization and democracy. In the liberation philosophy, Dussel says that there were conditions and people even in the non-Western world where they tried to dissociate from this process. And in other places, like he gives example of the Frankfurt School, where critics started questioning the positions of this modernism or modernity or for that matter, the process of modernization and tried to offer some fundamental questions which were not asked that time. So, in this sequence, we can see that there were developments happening all over the world where people started thinking, rethinking, critically asking questions and raising their voices against this form of knowledge system where it used to dominate and discriminate other forms of knowledge system. In this context, Dossel's arguments becomes very important to counter, criticize, interrogate this modernity and the process of colonization. Early reference to the term transmodernity can be seen in the work of a Spanish philosopher and feminist Rosa Maria Rodriguez Magda, who in her 1989 essay La Sonarisa di Saturno Hasia una teriwa transmoderna examines transmodernity as a philosophical concept. According to her, transmodernity prolongs, continues and transcends modernity. It is the return of some of its lines and ideas, perhaps even the most ingenuous but also the most universal. So what does Dussel implicate in his understanding of transmodernity? So, in the further section, we would like to see that how this construction of transmodernity of Dussel by recalling three of his major works in this light. When we see that this Eurocentric conception of modernity has been challenged and criticized by Enric Dussel in a very subtle way. It's a group of scholars like we have been mentioning and they formed and offered a critique to the whole idea of this modernity. Many of them scholars have attached the notion of colonization to the aspect of modernity. How 
both colonization and modernity these two factors are have approached and imposed their own motives their own agenda on people who never like to adapt to their agenda either through violence either through force and in later on when countries and nations got independence through subtle ways of coloniality what we have discussed academic dependency captive mind so on and so forth that we are going to delineate in this module once we uh, progress further in this context dussel introduced two concepts of modernity one is intra european where in various reasons this modernity couldn't go pass beyond this european continent rather it was prominent inside the european region itself where they started developing various form of uh, revolution and various form of like a uh, philosophy enlightenment philosophy industrial revolution french revolution so on and so forth that gave momentum to establish it as a form of uh, uh, dominant power the other one is like this universalizing nature of modernity which transcend itself or went beyond the european boundary in a universalizing power it started colonizing other places through say economy politics culture so on and so forth by spreading its tentacles to other parts beyond europe so dussel shows how it worked in the two context first one within european context rather another one it went beyond europe and tried to travel all over world transmodernity incorporates cultural movements outside the european vision european modernity as we know is seen as being central to five centuries and hegemonizing for two centuries even though western culture is globalizing it doesn't affect the other movements of enormous creativity that affirm from the exteriority transmodernity in contrast demands a whole new interpretation of modernity in order to include movements that were never incorporated into european version so if we look at this various kind of aspect which are attached to the issue of modernity transmodernity offers a critique to it that we all know uh, uh, after having focusing on this issue but the most important aspect here is that how to evaluate modernity what are the aspect of transmodernity and in what ways it offers critic to the domain of modernity that is uh, what important here for us here to uh, discuss and remember if you look at uh, alcop's work he presents a critical review of dussel's transmodernity modernity must be transcended by a retelling of its history which will reincorporate re the other who it has abolished to the periphery and downgraded epistemologically and politically the idea of transmodernity is meant to signify the global networks within which european modernity became possible the larger frame of reference than the eurocentric account includes transmodernity displaces the linear and geographically enclosed timeline of europe's myth of autogenesis with planetary specialization that includes principal players from all parts of the globe by suggesting a historical narrative to modernity dussel questions the valorization of the distinction between ancient and modern which occurred during the renaissance working within the larger philosophical framework of philosophy of liberation dussel delivers a stellar critique to modernity thesis this framework needs to be understood in the latin american context which produced a particular mode of thinking that has influenced dussel so if we look at the whole process if we look at the whole idea which is being generated from the critic 
we have seen that how they are trying to criticize and attack the whole universalizing effect of the modernity. Where it says only this whole idea, modern thinking was generated in the European context, transmodernity tries to offer critique and says that look, we need to go beyond this European context. There were various kind of modernities, but what, does, what happened here? European context, in European knowledge process, the European system of thought, they tried to encapsulate other forms in their own domain. Whereby it is a myth, the critic say, the, it is a myth to demonstrate this European thought process or this modernity which became universal and the center point of the history. European history claim that they have started the civilization, they are the center point of the civilization. They are the pathfinders by ignoring other cultures, devaluing other cultures. So in transmodernity, along with Dussel, other scholars, they find problem with the claim of modernity and they offer various suggestions to counter and to change this form of domination and create and uh, dismantle the hegemony created by the European modernity. Maldonado Tours suggests that there can be at least three strands of articulations in the post-World War scenario. First among them is the rise of American way of theorizing and understanding. Second is the Soviet communism and thirdly the decolonial turn seen in ex-colonial country. The decolonial turn expresses itself in two moves. First as a political emancipation, independence from the European colonizers and the secondly as a awakening of the structures of mentalities of colonialism embedded in the newly independent nation states in the form of institutions and knowledge processes that were Eurocentric. The Eurocentrism embedded in the ex-colonial countries were consequences of the eminence of South and Northwestern European countries in terms of economic and knowledge productions. So here what we saw, it is argued that two kinds of situation led to this uh, knowledge production system where we still, we are, where we are still under this coloniality. First one is that nations and countries getting independence from these colonizers where they got freedom. But in the second stage, they tried to delink themselves from this Eurocentric dominance. If you look at this Eurocentrism, it tried to capture the whole system of knowledge. It ruined their local cultures. It deformed. It created an illusion. It created a biased understanding about their own culture and tradition where the local indigenous population made to believe that this western culture is more superior than their own cultures. People are made to follow the western culture blindly. So if you look at the major critique what have emerged after this post-colonialism or the post-colonial scholars, they have emphasized more on this coloniality, this academic dependence, the captive mind and this transmodernity approach, rather focusing on the physical dominance of the colonizers. The earlier one was more visible, but this later one become very difficult to see because it is very difficult to quantify the nature of captivity in terms of knowledge, in terms of epistemological uh, encroachment, what happened and who did and how it came and the outcome is very difficult to measure quantitatively. But if you look at in a qualitative aspect, we can find the nature, if you analyze the text, if you can read the outcome of the type of nature, the, uh, the type of research we conduct, the type of research problem we generate and raise, these are highly influenced by this western notion of worldview, 
which is again related to the production of knowledge which happened in the western countries. Question arises whether Dussel is transcending the concept of modernity through this concept of transmodernity. He tries to locate himself in the exterior position like his other colleagues and not like this European or American scholars who are based in that particular domain, in the western domain and offer critics to this form of domination. He posits himself in the dependency school of thought, in the exploitative relation what this system is having and try to offer, a, uh, and he tries to offer a critique to the whole exploitative relationship. He is not uh, trying to develop a particular form which is only useful for Latin America. Rather, he says and question that those who have developed uh, dependence uh, theory kind of critique to this domination, they were located in the Western mode of thinking. Rather, he says and appeals that there should be dependency theory from and of Latin America. He says this the European modernity domination is merely for two centuries. It, it has lasted since last two centuries. Prior to that, we have many cultures, we have many societies and civilizations. So he says we need to focus through this idea of transmodernity and try to study and understand what existed, what happened before and prior to this western form of modernity came into existence. He further argues Europe's crucial and enlightened hegemony scarcely lasted two centuries. Only two centuries, too short term to profoundly transform the ethico-mythical nucleus of ancient and universal centuries like the Chinese and others of the Far East. These cultures have been partly colonized, but most of the structure of their values has been excluded, scorned, negated and ignored rather than annihilated. Dussel illustrates how such cultures in its engagement with modernity survived. These cultures are charting their own futures. In making this claim, he proceeds to mark a significant claim that these cultures which has been excluded, scorned, negated and ignored cannot be seen as a postmodern since they are not modern but simultaneously pre-modern and existing parallel to the modern. To be sure, he contends postmodernism is a final stage in modern European North American culture, the core of modernity. Chinese or Vedic cultures could never be European or postmodern but rather are something very different as a result of their distinct roots. Through various discussions, Dossel point out our attention to the possible configuration of the future social world. Using the exteriority of the modern as a creative force, he suggests that one could possibly get solutions which may not be possible within the internal logics of the modern. Hence, transmodern as a concept enables us to forge an intercultural dialogue. Transmodernity points toward all of those aspects that are situated beyond and also prior to the structures valorized by modern European North American culture and which are present in the great non-European universal cultures and have begun to move toward a pluriversal utopia. An intercultural dialogue must be transversal. That is to say, it needs to let out from a place other than a mere dialogue between the learned experts of the academic or institutionally dominant worlds. It must be a multicultural dialogue that doesn't presuppose the illusion of a non-existent symmetry between cultures. So, in this regard, we have seen how it is argued and put forward that there should be multiversal positions, there should be various opinions, 
there should be various voices which should be heard equally in democratic manner in the plain field of knowledge. Whereas we have seen how the various kind of dialogues emerging out of this modern phenomena by attacking the very origin of knowledge production. Enric Dossel argues that it is time and very necessary for this periphery to offer and sustain production of knowledge in a more rigorous manner. He says that we need to go beyond various kind of binaries to construct or to develop a form of knowledge which will be useful to understand the local specificity, local context and to understand the local social cultural milieu. He posits that if we bring or borrow the western form of knowledge which is being produced in a particular context may not be the most appropriate form and it might devalue the local cultures and civilization and create an illusion and we will get a biased picture of our own reality. To conclude and summarize this whole argument in this session, we can see if you go back to sociology and its origin, Karl Marx, Emil Durkheim and Max Weber and after them many others, their idea originated in the Eurocentric or Eurocentric conditions. So all sorts of sociological knowledge which borrowed or developed later on, it had a particular origin in a socio-cultural context. When it came to the periphery, when it came to the margin, similarly it had that way or that angle or that particular Eurocentrism or Eurocentric idea, lenses and concept to use in their local context, whereby it didn't give any proper or suitable result. It gave a different kind of result than what should have been uh, in the proper place. What I mean to say here is that this Western notion of modernity is different and it ignores that other version of modernity which exists in various other places. Dussel say that the European modernity is only two centuries old, whereby there are civilization, Chinese civilization, Vedic civilization and other indigenous civilization existed in other parts of the world very old and older than the European civilization and European modernity. In this context, it is wrong to say that only European civilization is the universal one and others have borrowed or either they have to follow this European modernity. So by using this concept and the tool of transmodernity, he offers a strong critique to the Eurocentric notions of modernity and he tries to go beyond all sorts of constraint, restriction and binaries to offer us a tool to understand our own culture, own civilization and realities which are distant and which are different from this European uh, socio-cultural and historical conditions. And he says that there are various parts in the world which are having their own history, own culture, own society. So we need to develop our own understanding. People in the periphery need to develop their own understanding of their own societies so that then only we can arrive at a fruitful discussion and a fruitful understanding of the society. Hereby, we saw that how transmodernity can be used like any other tools as a strong and powerful critique to the European modernity system. For more information, kindly log on to the EPG Patsala website and where you will get more readings and references. Thank you.